Rajni, what's wrong? Tom, I have a script and I don't know what to do with it. Should I burn it? Feed it to my cat? You need some writer's group therapy. Hello and welcome to Writer's Group Therapy. I'm Tom. And I'm Roshni. We're writers helping writers. Are you ready for your session? The doctors are in. The doctors are ready. (laughs) As in ready player one. Yes. You know what's really funny is when you think about it, they actually never really, I mean, we know what the reference is, but they never actually really used it in the movie. Yeah, they didn't actually. You're right. Now that I think about it. So you and I both saw it. What were your Mm -hmm. initial thoughts? Oh, I loved it. I loved it. I was in uh, Nerdvana. Um, I was reliving every pop cultural reference of my childhood. I grew up in the 80s and, you know, Back to the Future has just always been one of my favorite movies. So just seeing the DeLorean racing around and the hearing the music and all the things that Spielberg brought to that, you know, the same heart and excitement and energy and, you know, the fun of those kinds of movies just was just end to end, just enthralling it was wonderful so Mm -hmm. you know it's it's interesting too if you go on like youtube and stuff you'll see people have done a lot of easter eggs you miss there's like so much going on in that movie as far as references you you need somebody to break it down for you because just one showing enough you're like i missed five million references it's funny i actually read the book and i went to the movie with some friends half of us had read the book half of us hadn't seen it and for those of us who had read the book, we were pretty divided. And I ah. I wasn't sure how I felt. I'm still not sure how I feel. I did not read the book beforehand, just to clarify. Yeah. So I didn't have any preconceived notions going in. Yeah. So let's talk about it in terms of writing. Okay. So spoiler alert right here, you guys. If you haven't seen the movie, if you haven't read the book and you want to do either, stop right here, go do that, and then come back to this because I will be spoiling both the book and the film for you from here on out. You have been warned. So I think the thing for me that bothered me about the movie, and I didn't even realize it until after I left, was it's very bloodless. and I'm not saying that a movie has to have blood and guts to be a good movie, but if you've read the novel, it's a YA novel. And the, this movie felt more like a kid's movie, kind of like Goonies. So in the novel, there's actually three things that they changed that I was like, Oh, why'd you do that? And especially because the writer of the book also was a screenwriter on the movie. So I'm not sure why he changed these elements when he probably had veto power, but so in the in the book, um, when they talk about the Oasis and Halliday and stuff, he's been dead for, I think, 20 or 25 years. And they have no clue where to get the first key. They, it's, no one's ever found anything about it. But in the movie, he's only been dead for five years, and they know where the first key is. They just can't get to it. No one's been able to win this race. So one thing I didn't understand was... Wade's talking about how it's been five years since Halliday's death. And in the beginning, everyone was going crazy, going to the annals to learn about Halliday. And then now, five years later, nobody cares. And I'm like, five years is not enough time, especially when you guys know where the first key is, to lose interest in this game. That doesn't make sense. Yeah, and the stakes are so high. You know, if somebody said there's a billion dollars somewhere in the world hidden, people aren't just going to stop looking after five years. Mm -hmm. They're going to keep going. The the reward is too high for them to give up. Yeah, but it makes more sense in the book. 20, 25 years and no one has any clue where anything is. That makes it go into kind of urban legend status. So I'm like, okay, I can get behind the book. I'm not sure why they did the change in the movie. I understand they had two and a half hours and they were like, okay, let's just get to the first key. But it kind of made some of that feel false. And then another change that they did that I was like, I'm not happy with this one. You were talking about stakes. There are no stakes in the movie. And I feel like as an actor and as a writer, that is like the number one thing, right? Make the stakes really high. Your your characters have to have something to work towards and it has to mean something. So in the book, uh, the Fab Five, what do they call them? The High Five, right? They meet up in the Oasis. I think four of them, because he doesn't meet the girl till the end. Um, four of them meet up in real life or, you know, maybe two and two, like I think the two Japanese boys meet up in real life and H and, and, uh, Wade meet up or whatever. One of the boys dies 
And that's how you know that this corporation is willing to do whatever it takes to get the money. And suddenly, it's a really big deal to win this game. Nobody dies in this movie. Yeah, there's only like one person who actually points a real gun at anyone. And, and when he points the gun, he doesn't even shoot it. Yeah. Well, there's several hundred witnesses standing around him, but... <laughs> he, I, I think he doesn't care. If you're willing to pull a gun in front of... He was, you know, he's shooting up yeah. in the trailer park. You, you've got this gun, point blank. I was like, why wouldn't you shoot the gun and have one of the friends take the bullet? They don't even have to die. Just get him in the arm. Or maybe he shoots the bullet and this golden egg suddenly has made Wade's uh, suit invincible. Yeah. So it's like, whoa, you know, amazing. And then he gets arrested. But I'm like, your bad guy is sitting there holding a gun on you for five minutes and isn't doing a darn thing? Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? No stakes. Well, it kind of shows that he's really a hollow, shallow character who, you know, hasn't actually ever done the dirty work himself before. You know, that's part of that, I think, is he's really not the big tough guy his avatar looks like in the Oasis. He's actually just a scared little man and really can't do, you know, anything serious or real. That's what I got out of that anyway. I mean, but you already knew that. You knew that from like the first five mm -hmm. minutes of meeting this character. You don't need the big show off where he can't pull the trigger. And it's not like he can't pull the trigger because he has a change of heart or some compelling reason. He's just kind of sitting there going, Duh? Yeah. excuse there, me? <laughs> there, yeah, there's really not a tension like, oh, is he, is he actually going to shoot? You're like, this guy's not going to shoot him. This guy's a wimp and he's surrounded by people who will beat the crap out of him if he if he does anything. But, any, but he um, – you know, it just like you said, the stakes don't feel as high because he gives up, actually. So the bad guy even gives up at this point when he 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 could kill Wade. Um, not sure how that would help him because it's not that he would actually get the golden egg at that point. So it's it would just be kind of revenge like. So, But that's a strong enough motive. You know, you got what I wanted, so I'm going to take you out. I mean, there are no stakes, period. Nobody dies, so the kids never feel like, oh my gosh, I have to win this contest. And even when, um, I forgot the the henchman, but when he says, oh, I've spent 10 years building up my golden treasures, that is nothing, especially because the, the Nolan zeroes out the entire oasis, so you're all going to start from ground one. Yeah, It's just like, there's no stakes. And that's that drove me nuts. And I didn't realize why until I sat down later and I analyzed it. It bothered me that there was just nothing for the characters to really fight against. There were no consequences yeah. if they lost. Now, we know that the IOI company had plans to spam everybody if they got control of the oasis and do you know make make a bunch of money but it doesn't say anywhere that they wouldn't still be a successful company even if they didn't control the oasis so he, the guy at the end goes to jail for whatever you know attempted murder actually he did kill the one aunt i guess and the aunt and her boyfriend died in the one explosion but other than that you're right nobody else loses hardly anything so I wanted to say, you know, when you're talking about Wade and, and uh, the timeline, I was wondering if they they made the timeline shorter, the five years versus 20 or 25 years, because Wade is then uh, has a closer tie. He's he sees um, uh, Halliday as, a, you know, a kind of a I guess a father figure as kind of a, a you know, a mentor or a, I guess you would say an idol of some sort. And. If if this had happened 20, 25 years ago, Wade would have just been a baby or maybe three or four or five years old at the time. So he wouldn't really have known any of the Halliday stuff. You know, like people like kids today don't understand, um, you know, Steve Jobs like I do. I grew up as Mac was developing and Apple was growing. So I had like when Steve Jobs died, I was all upset. It was very sad because he was such a, you know, his he and his company and his products made such an impact on my life. But I think I think maybe that's kind of the reason they they did that uh, condensing of the time so that Wade himself would have a more personal connection to Halliday. I don't know. What do you think about that? Mm, I I don't agree with that because I'm trying to remember. Do they say in the movie what year it was supposed yeah, to be set in? I want to say 2025 or 2045. I'd have to see it again now. 2025 is very different than 2045, just because sure. then you have to go, if Holiday grew up in the 80s, how old was he when he died, right? Right. So 
I mean, and then if it's like 20, 45 and he just died five years ago, you're like, man, he was very well lived. <laughs> but I mean, I don't know, maybe they can live longer in the future or whatever. But I I don't agree with that because part of what made it such an 80s nostalgia trip in the book was the fact that the character hadn't any ties to that generation and had to go back and like play all the games, read all the books, watch all the movies, and was even searching out the obscure stuff because he loved 80s so much and he loved Holiday so much. So I don't think that really makes a difference, to be honest. I think it actually was a stronger point in the book uh. that he hadn't grown up anywhere near the 80s, didn't know anybody from the 80s. And it was like, I mean, it would be like us being like, ooh, I love the 20s, right? There aren't a lot of people from the 1920s anymore, you know? So you're like, okay, I'm going to search out everything and flapper culture and blah, 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 like that kind of thing. I just, I don't, yeah. I'm not, I just don't really know why they made it so bloodless. The last point was just that they changed when he meets, I forget the girl's name. What was the girl's name? Oh, now you, now you had me forget it. Um, Artemis. Artemis. Yeah, whatever her real name is. So I think uh, the last point was, and it, it was really minor, they moved up when he meets Artemis. He meets Artemis at the end of the book, but in the movie they meet halfway through, and I get it, like they want to show off the actors and stuff like that. You mean meet in real life versus meet in the Oasis. Meet in real life, yeah. So she's still part of the whole story in the book, but just she's in the Oasis the whole time. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And and they really kind of downplay. He kind of has a, I, I think it's because they were condensing so much. Ready Player One sort of suffered a little bit from the telling syndrome, right? You're supposed to show, not tell. And because they had so much of the world to build before we got into that first key, they're like, let me tell you this, let me tell you this, let me tell you this. So one of the things they briefly mention is that he's seen Artemis, you know, he's seen her videos, he's read her blogs, blah, blah, blah. She's actually a celebrity in that world. She's like a cyber celebrity. But it's it's mentioned so briefly that you're like, wow, he's kind of creepy about how much he likes this girl, you know? Huh. So, uh. but she's actually kind of like a cyber celebrity in the book. But they, um, it's really sweet in the book because they finally meet in real life the way it's written. I understand why they moved the timeline up. And I'm, I understand why they changed the challenges. I'm totally fine with that. I just, there needed to be stakes. You know, and I get that it's a kids movie and maybe the rating, but they could have done a lot of it off screen and just still imparted that there was something bigger than these kids that they really had to fight for. Well, I still loved it. Um, it makes me want to read the book and maybe I'll have a different opinion after I read the book. So we talked about before how, whether you should read a book or see the movie first. And I think this supports my idea that you should definitely see the movie first because the, the books are always better. And this way, I really love the movie. And, and now if I read the book, I think I'll just enjoy it more. And then, but you saw the movie first. So or you saw, read the book first, so then you were waiting for things to happen, like I did with, I think it was Annihilation. I, I was waiting for something to happen that never happened because they re, they wrote it differently. So I think that I think that that kind of supports my argument for seeing movies before you read the books. But to be fair, when I read the book, they hadn't even said that it would be made into a movie yet. So this is true. You can never tell when your your favorite. You can't wait. I'm going to wait until the movie's made, and then then I'll then I'll read the book because you never know if that's going to happen. So I guess that's kind of a silly. Uh, debate to have but if you could if you could right if you knew yeah <laughs> so how about for you guys what did you guys think about ready player one tweet your opinions at us at wg therapy you can also find us online at writersgrouptherapy.com and if you like what you hear subscribe and share it with your friends we'll see you next week